Welcome to the crypto bull market where dips are normal, healthy. I would say something that we should not only anticipate seeing often, but something that we should absolutely welcome. And in this video, I want to talk about the price action on Bitcoin. I really want to do an altcoin video, but things keep happening with Bitcoin that causes me to keep doing these Bitcoin videos. And I'm, I'm really enjoying tracking markets right now. In this video, I'm going to talk about how the move that's happening now is early. I'm going to show you a couple of pieces of data. I want to talk about the current overextension on the daily chart on Bitcoin and why these red candles are necessary. And I also just want to talk about altcoin season. I do want to end the video discussing, I think altcoin season is just about here or getting ready to be here. So please hit the subscribe, hit the like, and let's just jump into the video. So first things first, this is not how I anticipated announcing on the YouTube channel that Bitcoin broke at an all-time high, but that's the move. And I, I posted just a little bit ago on X and I said, Bitcoin broke all-time high and it was the most underwhelming move of the year. We're not even close to the hype part of this cycle. This is bullish. And I really think it is, everybody. I'm sitting here watching these Bitcoin charts and I don't have this, this parabolic, you know, crazy momentum vibe and i'm not seeing that vibe on socials like we have in cycles past and i think it's because we're not there yet retail is not even here yet you can just see in terms of google trends this is one way to look at it anyway uh just look at go the google search for bitcoin you can see right where it is right now just look at the 2017 bull market high or even the last bull market high over here in 2021 bitcoin just kind of at the beginning stages, I think, of, of a parabolic search trend for retail. But going back to the charts now, let's discuss these three things. And I want to start with talking about how everything that's happening is early. So two points. Number one, you all know the bull market doors have been broken. Bull market high to bear market low, lower high Fibonacci, a massive macro indicator that I use personally for my technical analysis from a cycle perspective, this green or this yellow channel broken. I talk about it nonstop. It happened before having this cycle. Every cycle passed, it has happened post having. So we already know that. But the other piece to this, and you can see all the way back here, 2017, the other piece to Bitcoin and the move that's happening, happening early is even this all time high move that just occurred. I mean, this was like an hour, one to two hours ago. But that all time high move, if we actually look, not only is, is Bitcoin breaking the bull market doors early before the halving, but breaking all-time high right here, the second weekly candle, and it's, it's a pretty new weekly candle. We still have five days, eight hours left of this weekly candle. But check out last cycle, for instance. Bitcoin broke the bull market doors, and then there was the one candle, and then there was, look, that second candle just testing the all-time high, and then basically the third candle basically testing all-time high, there's a fourth red candle and then breaking all-time high, it looks like, uh, four, four weeks later after breaking the bull market doors. And then we go back to the cycle before that even, and we see Bitcoin uh, breaking all-time high after breaking the bull market doors. We have one week, two week, basically the third week in. And then we have one more time. I just want to show you the cycle before that. You can see Bitcoin closing a weekly candle there. One to basically in the third week in breaking all-time high. So right now, Bitcoin is barely into the second candle and it's broken all-time high and it's truly testing it. And it's going to be very interesting to see how this weekly candle closes because if, if Bitcoin still fi over five days left, if Bitcoin manages to keep pushing higher and close a really nice weekly candle above the all-time high, I mean, that will be, that will be a power move unlike we unlike we've ever seen in cycles past. So not only is it happening before Bitcoin having, but it's actually after breaking the actual doors, we have a powerful second weekly close above all time high. This is something I'm watching in terms of what is happening earlier this cycle around because that's kind of been the theme so far. It's been incredible to watch. The consistencies of the move are on point. It's just that everything seems to be happening faster and sooner. And that's interesting to me. I think a lot has to do with the supply shock that is now in play from a different angle, the ATFs. We talk about that a lot. Now let's talk about the overextension that's happening on the short term. I think probably a lot of people are watching short-term price movement in terms of Bitcoin. So 
I, I guess it's it's fair, you know, Bitcoin right at that all time high level seeing resistance makes sense, right? That's something we see in in target areas anyway, or key mental area areas. It's like we run to the area and then boom, it just crashes, right? So I guess that's kind of a fair move from a technical analysis perspective. This is kind of normal to see. But put aside that for a second, even if Bitcoin wasn't breaking all time high, which it which it's testing that area, it tested the area. We have this overextension from the 20-day moving average, and this is a really important data point for entering this bull market. I'm going to explain why. 20, 20 plus percent overextended right now, around 21% or so overextended from that 20-day that moving average. And you can see the top of the bull market doors right there also you know, got some nice separation from that area, which is crucial. But I want to bring into play a Lux Algo indicator. I think it just helps a lot in terms of portraying and illustrating how overextended Bitcoin is. And, and it really helps us look at historical data and say, okay, the move is normal and consolidation actually makes even more sense right now. And I'm actually going to take the move, breaking the bull market doors. And this is basically a reversal zone. When Bitcoin starts interacting, and I've talked about this before, and everybody, you can try Lux Algo in the link below, sign up with a CCV link. They're a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal team and just have really cool indicators that I've been using. If you want to try them out, hit the link below. But we've talked about recently how, how Bitcoin and cryptos in general, when it's kind of at the top range of the reversal zone or even outside of the reversal zone, it's just normal for, for Bitcoin to, to just consolidate, to take a break. Now, it happened already actually on this daily chart that you can see here in February, pulls in. Then we get another, we're overextended, we're like outside of the reversal zone. But the move through the bull market doors and now to all-time high, I want to look at cycles past when Bitcoin was in a similar environment. Check out, and, and this is, I think this is really useful, at least for me. Check out the interaction. This is what I want to just point out. The interaction of the reversal zone itself, this overextension, maybe time to cool off area, and then key support area, the 20-day moving average. This is what we're going to be looking at here. So this is this cycle happening now. Let's look at what's normal when we look at cycles past. Here's Bitcoin in 2020, breaking the bull market doors. What's Bitcoin doing? Very similar in terms of hitting that upper end of the reversal zone and then pulling in upper end of the reversal zone, pulling in, right? And then what happens? It does consolidate and it falls to the 20-day moving average. And even in this case, last cycle, you can see Bitcoin touching the top of the bull market doors. This is a key area we want to watch right now in terms of Bitcoin. If there's going to be some more volatility to the downside, it's not just the 20-day. The top of the bull market doors is definitely a notable area of support we want to watch. But going back now to 2020, just look at that move. Just such nice consolidation between the upper end of the reversal zone, the Lux Algo reversal zone, as well as the 20 day and even these bull market doors. Now let's go back a cycle a cycle before that, 2017. Here's what I want to make a note of because this is and we're going to look at 2013 as well, but just look at the volatility in terms of Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin was just riding the top of this reversal zone all through breaking the bull market doors, got crazy overextended. Look how outside of the reversal zone it was. It was way overbought and this massive volatility came into play and Bitcoin just broke all support, right? So broke the bull market door support, broke the key 20 day moving average support that I'm keeping my eye on and actually fell below the doors all the way towards this reversal zone, which is kind of this bullish kind of reversal zone where Bitcoin, you can see bounce just above. This is a scenario here. I don't think this is going to happen. I don't, but I do want to point it out because it happened two cycles ago and the reason I want to point it out is because if we enter this crazy environment of volatility like we saw there, and by the way, if we're looking at uh, how much, how long that took, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it was like a week to the downside, one week worth of data to the downside. If Bitcoin's about to put a week worth of downside, this is just an environment where we want to see where support holds for Bitcoin, because I think if it happens, there will be an absolute massive bounce. But I do want to just know, I don't think it's going to happen, but that's what volatility in an environment like this could look like. Bitcoin falling all the way back in here. Imagine the fear throughout markets if this happens. And then, you know, reversal zones all the way down here around 39,000, 
do not think, once again, that that's going to happen. But I just want to point out, 20-day moving average, bull market doors around 57,000, the 20-day 20, 20 moving average around 56,000, the 50-day and, and confluent with the lower end of the bull market doors around 48,000. It's just something I want to bring to attention. Not that I'm saying it's getting there, but that would be a mess. That would be a massive dip where I think we see a huge bounce for Bitcoin. Now we go to the cycle before that, more consistent with kind of the data, how Bitcoin interacts in a bullish environment with the reversal zone as well as the 20-day. Here's Bitcoin breaking the bull market doors in 2013. Just look at it, riding the upper end of the reversal zone. And then what's it do? It breaks the uh, bull market doors right here. And then in that same daily candle, which is insane, the volatility, it tests the 20-day moving average. So it's, it's really, for me, this reversal zone, the upper end of the reversal zone and the 20-day moving average. Look at that channel for Bitcoin going parabolic. So really nice channel of the reversal zone in the 20-day, 2013. Really nice channel in 2020 for the reversal zone and the 20-day. And obviously, we, we looked at the 2017 volatility. We want to take it into account. We want to visualize every scenario um, but right now, I think for me, I'm truly watching this channel, the, the upper end of the reversal zone and the 20-day moving average, currently 56000 just around $56,000. And, you know, where Bitcoin basically is right now, because we're right at the upper end of the reversal zone. So that's the channel that I'm watching for. Can Bitcoin continue to consolidate within this channel and continue to see higher highs and higher lows? In this environment, cycles past, that's what Bitcoin has done. It's time for higher highs and higher lows. Is there, is there a case where Bitcoin just doesn't manage to do it and we really start consolidating big time and the chart gets completely thrown off? There's always the case for that. Uh, but historically, I'm showing you what Bitcoin has done. Obviously, I'm always, you know me, I'm always thinking worst case scenario in the back of my head. You know, the, these, these charts aren't guaranteed. Crypto is extremely risky, but I think the consistency is very sound. And I wanted to talk about that, the overextension, and also just this channel that I'm watching for Bitcoin and what's normal. Because if Bitcoin did fall to around $56,000 right now, it's a $9,000 drop, could be a huge wick out of that area. And guess what? That's normal. That's a normal move for Bitcoin. So that's something I'm embracing and just realizing. Now, altcoin season, I want to discuss it and I need to start doing some more altcoin videos, which I will. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and put notifications on for that content as well. But altcoin season may be here, and this is why. I want to show you. It's, it's very simple. I'm taking Bitcoin all-time high data from two cycles past, and we're saying, okay, what did Bitcoin dominance do? And it's very simple. 2020. 2020 all-time high for Bitcoin, which is basically where we are right now. Bitcoin had, this is a weekly chart, basically one kind of two weeks of upside in terms of power move, puts in this higher low, or lower high, I'm sorry, at a lower high Fibonacci from the cycle before that. And then it falls. And that's all coin season. That's what all coin season looks like right after Bitcoin hits all time high. And I'll have to do a deeper video on this, but that's what it looks like. So I'm keeping an eye on Bitcoin dominance right now, because if you notice Bitcoin hitting all time high back here in 2017, what happened right after all time high? Bitcoin dominance fell. All coin season began. So basically one to two weeks in the last couple of cycles, one to two weeks after Bitcoin hits all-time high, altcoin season begins. And so that's a big deal. That's not to say it's definitely going to happen right now. I, I have to keep saying that. There's no guarantee cycles repeat, but I've just been doing these videos for over six years. And if you've been watching, you know the data has just repeated. So it's ridiculous not to pay attention to that. In this case, look at Bitcoin. With all of the bullishness, all of the insanity and demand around the ETF and the, the power move that Bitcoin has been making this cycle happening earlier before having all of it, look at Bitcoin dominance in the last months because this is a weekly chart. It just, it, there, there's been no dominance. It's just been sideways. Altcoins are performing. I continue to say this. I think long-term altcoins will dominate Bitcoin. This space isn't just Bitcoin. I get Bitcoin. I get it. And I understand how it's a power player. It is the power player of crypto. But there is so much innovation in this technology as a crypto as, as a whole. There is so much retail interest and demand in everything else outside of Bitcoin. And guess what? 
there is going to be absolute institutional demand as well in altcoins. This technology is, is going to be way more massive and broad than just Bitcoin. So this Bitcoin dominance move, I'm, I'm allowing still in my mind for some type of power move. Maybe markets crash. And this could be the moment Bitcoin dominance starts rising because Bitcoin not as volatile to the downside. I'm allowing some upside, right? We have our lower high Fibonacci, 60, 65% dominance. But I'm telling you, if markets continue bullish, I think this chart eventually in the next couple of weeks even might start falling as we go into the halving and we see altcoin season begin. So those are my thoughts on Bitcoin, price movements, crypto in general. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. If you're out there and you're not a subscriber, make sure to subscribe. We continue to grow in the crypto space. Have some fun with it. I appreciate you. Hit the notifications. Hit the like if you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next video. God bless.